Hello, I'm Bruce Proven. I'm the Managing Director of Page Proven Family and Fertility Lawyers. We're a firm of lawyers that practice in Brisbane exclusively in family and fertility law. I want to talk to you today about prenuptial agreements. Are they effective and is there an alternative? Now, a prenuptial agreement is a binding financial agreement that parties enter before they get married and the agreement states that in the event of a separation, this is to occur and this is how our assets, liabilities and superannuation are to be distributed. There's simply one category of binding financial agreements. Uh, there can also be agreements in relation to de facto couples. So a de facto couple can enter into a similar agreement, again, to provide that in the event of separation that this is how our property is to be distributed. There can also be post-nuptial agreements, and that is similarly an agreement reached between a couple to say in the event we separate, this is how everything is to be distributed. So sometimes lawyers will advise their clients against entering into prenuptial agreements, especially if the wedding's impending and one person may feel pressured into entering into one of these agreements in the days or weeks leading up to the wedding. A lawyer is likely to advise that so that one person doesn't feel pressured into signing the agreement, that the agreement wait until just after the wedding. Uh, now the question is, are prenuptial agreements effective? Uh, the short answer is yes, provided they're properly drafted. Now since about 2000, the Family Law Act has been changed to allow for binding financial agreements to be prepared and to have legal effect, provided they're properly drafted and provided that both sides receive independent legal advice before they sign. There have been a number of cases where these prenuptial agreements or binding financial agreements have been set aside for technical problems. Uh, there was a spate of these cases for about 10 years after the Act was changed to make them lawful. And the result of that was that the Act was amended so that the court is able to overlook these technical difficulties if there's an application to enforce one of these agreements. But even despite that, since then there have been agreements, sorry, there have been cases where these agreements have been set aside, but it doesn't occur all of that often. Provided you have an agreement that's been properly drafted by a lawyer, it meets the technical requirements, and both sides have had independent legal advice before signing, then generally the agreement will be effective. Now, one of the difficulties with these prenuptial agreements is the obvious problem that if one person decides that they want to have an agreement to say how their assets are to be divided in the event of separation, uh, they may feel uncomfortable discussing that with their new partner and possibly their husband or wife-to-be. And in fact, in some cases, simply having the discussion can sour the relationship. And I know of cases where the issue has been raised between a couple and that's led to the end of the relationship. So if you are wanting to enter into one of these binding financial agreements, certainly seek advice from a lawyer at an early stage because the whole process can be quite time consuming and take you know, several months for the agreement to be drafted and uh, the, any differences to be negotiated before the agreement can be signed. Um, if a person proposes to their partner that they enter into a binding financial agreement but the answer is no, I don't want to do so, or what sometimes happens, they get advice from a lawyer not to enter into the agreement, then there is an alternative that could apply in a very limited number of cases. In a case of Chancellor and McCoy about 10 years ago, uh, there was circumstances where there had been a, a long-term relationship between a gay couple who did not have children. 
And the way they conducted their affairs was not to intermingle their assets. All of their assets were owned in their own name. They did have arrangements for the sharing of joint expenses during the relationship. They each had wills that left their property to people other than each other. And in that case, the judge said that in the circumstances of the case, it was not just and equitable for an order to be made. Uh, one of the parties then appealed to the full court of the family court, and the full court said that the judge, in the first instance, got it right. So what we're sometimes seeing is couples who don't intend to have children, they enter a relationship with their own property and keep those assets separate, but enter into an arrangement with the sharing of expenses. In that case, it may be a case where a court decides it's not just and equitable for an order to be made. So look, that only applies in a limited number of circumstances. If you have any questions or concerns, it's important that you obtain advice from a lawyer at an early stage. My name is Bruce Proven from Page Proven, Family and Fertility Lawyers. Very good. There's one more to go. Hello, my name's Bruce Proven. I'm the Managing Director of Page Proven Family and Fertility Lawyers. We're a firm of lawyers that practices in Brisbane exclusively in family and fertility law. I want to talk to you today about keeping yourself healthy during a family law dispute. When people have been through or are going through a separation, it is a very stressful time in their lives for most people. So it's really important to look after yourself. For most people, or many people, it's the most stressful time of their life. And the worst thing you can do is, if you're going through a separation, is not to look after your physical and mental health. Uh, Not only is it the worst thing for you, but it can be the worst thing for your children, but also for other family members as well. And especially if you're going through a parenting dispute, the most important thing that your children need is for you to stay strong and healthy emotionally. Now, court proceedings are stressful at the best of times, but for people going through disputes in the Federal Circuit and Family Court of Australia, especially parenting disputes, it is particularly stressful. And it can be even more stressful if you choose to represent yourself. So again, look after yourself and there's a few ways that you can do that. Uh, One is to look after your physical health. In other words, continue to exercise. Uh, There's more and more research coming out about the importance to your mental health or to people's mental health of remaining physically active and trying to keep fit. In fact, there was some research that came out just a few weeks ago from the University of Queensland about the best forms of physical activity to help people with mental health. The other thing is to not be afraid of reaching out and getting help from others. You're going through a really difficult time of your life, so that's the good time to seek help from not only family and friends, but often uh, you can seek, can and should seek advice from health professionals such as counsellors, psychologists and psychiatrists. Many people who are going through a separation suffer from mental health problems. It's not unusual and if you're suffering from a mental health problem it's not something that you should be ashamed of. But it's important that you are, if you are having mental health problems that you do seek the appropriate advice and that if medication is prescribed that you take that medication. And because so many people going through family law disputes, especially disputes in court, are suffering from mental health problems, it's not a black mark that you are suffering from a mental health problem. Many people are going through anxiety or depression. And again, what is important and assists your case is if you can show that if you are suffering from one of these conditions, such as depression or anxiety, that you are seeking treatment for it and that you are taking the advice of your mental health professionals. 
So it's important to seek advice, not only from the health professionals, but also seek advice from a lawyer who can explain the court process, explain your entitlements, your rights, your obligations, the steps along the way, what it might cost, etc. So please, if you're going through a separation, look after your physical and mental health and seek the appropriate advice. Your children will thank you for it later on. I'm Bruce Proven from Paige Proven, Family and Fertility Lawyers. Pretty good. Okay. Done. So when do you head back to Sydney? Uh, this afternoon. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, head back uh, at a three o'clock flight or something like that. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, yeah. I don't know if I told you that uh, we've got a couple of guys interested in buying our practice. Oh, I said right. No. Well, well, last last.